Page 37, The Giant Steps. Well, this thing looks ugly, don't it? Good grief. Actually, it kind of depends on your approach to things. You could say, yeah, it looks really ugly. That's what I say. Or you could say, well, this looks like fun. Or it looks like an adventure. Ooh. I think it looks ugly. But we'll take it. You just take it one step at a time and you can figure it out and we'll make it not so ugly is what we're after. So we're back in the key of C major, but we have accidentals in here. I see a bunch of E flats in places, so we ought to deal with those. Okay, that's fine. We're going to use the same finger for the E flat as we would for the E natural. All right. And this first line, what's going on here? I'm kind of going to take both hands at the same time here because of the way this is written, it works out that way. The first note, the left hand's here, a little finger. And the right hand is here. But you see in the third note, there's a note under it says LH over. Well, LH stands for left hand, and over means over the right hand. So you're going to take the left hand over and play that high, that C right here. So forget the rhythm, just get the notes first. So you're here, and then here, and then the left hand comes up here, and then here, leave the right hand there, and the left hand back down, and here. You get that? That's all we're doing, just playing C's. If you do it a few million times, it's not too bad. So that's it. That's what this. You have to pretty much memorize the first line because you got to look at the keyboard to see where you're going. But they're all C's, so it's easy to memorize the first two measures, huh? You don't have to go that fast. You take it your speed. But the point is, you break it down, and then it's not so bad. It's not. It looks ugly, but it really isn't that bad. You're just moving around quite a bit. Now the second line. Well, let's look. First off, one hand, your right hand's here, left hand's here, and you're playing the same note names in each hand. So you're here, here, and then the E flats, here. Okay. Okay. And then in the second measure, you're up here. Just go up an octave. Because you get a treble clef in the bottom staff. You see they change clef signs on you? They can do that. They can change clef signs anytime, anywhere. They can do it in the middle of a measure. They can do it anytime they want. Good luck trying to keep up with them because it's a So one of the things we should look at when we start learning a piece of music is what are the clef signs? Because they won't always be treble and clef bass. It's just that for now they're going to be, so I don't bother with it. But they could be both treble clef. They could be both bass clef. Hmm. Here, you get in the second line, second measure, both stabs are treble clef. So the left hand's up here, so here. And then you see the bass clef again, so now the left hand goes back into bass clef. Well, the last line, first two measures is like the beginning, it's the C's. Okay, and then you come back up, you get treble clef in the bottom staff again. Isn't this fun? So now you're back up here. Bass clef in the bottom staff because now you're down here. I don't know where you want to be, do you? Okay. So, really, this is like an etude. Remember, an etude is a study piece where you're studying some technical or practicing some technical thing. Here, we're moving the hands a lot, and that's it. And you're moving both hands together at the same time, and there's no rest. So, you lift up, you lift up, and move. Well, the second line, look at this. The first measure's here. The second measure's here. So you gotta lift up and move. Both hands together. You may have to practice that. Just lift up and move. So it's one and two and three and four and. You just cup it, you're cutting the last G a little bit short, so you got time to get up here. And then at the end of the second line, you're moving again, but now the left hand's playing first, and so you can move it first, and then as you play it, you can move the right hand. See, see, if I'm moving the hands around, if possible, I'll always move it one hand at a time, because it's easier to focus on one hand at a time. In the second line, it's not possible. You've got to move both together. But when you go from the second line to the third line, you can move one hand at a time. Left hand, and then here. 
And then you back up it with the left hand on the last line, going from the second measure to the third measure. You're here. Now you want to go to here. Your left hand's close to where you want to be. You don't have far to go. You just got to get the right hand up here. So you're here. Now the left hand, or the right hand isn't playing here. So if you want, while you're holding that down, go ahead and put your right hand up here and have it ready to go. That way all you got to do is focus on the left hand. So up here and down here. And you got to come down now, both hands together. Good luck with that one. So yes, this is a good practice piece for moving your hands around. I highly recommend it. You go slow. Don't rush this. I tend to speed it up so the video doesn't last forever. But you go really, really, really slow. Well, however slow you got to go so there's no hesitations anywhere. to do. It really is. I'm surprised you're giving you something this difficult this soon. And if you're just not getting it and you're struggling with not getting it, go on. Just keep going. You can always come back to it or you're going to get more of this later on anyway, so just go on. But if you can get it now, you're just one step ahead of later on. It helps you out there. Now, once you've got it, if you make it that far, then come back and play it with me. Let's play it very slowly together to make sure the notes and the rhythms and everything are there. And we're going to go pretty slow. I'll give us four counts since it's in 4-4 four, four time. One, two, and ready, and go. And one, and two, and three, four. Four and one and four and three and four and. Three and, four and. 